direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. Welcome to another great episode of Foxborough Central. You heard the man. I am Bob Hickey. I am your host, and I am pleased that you have taken the time to join me and my guest as we talk about the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. Foxborough is in Massachusetts, which is in the United States of America, and the United States of America is served at a federal level by many, many different organizations who are the face of our government. We are lucky enough today to have the face of our Food and Drug Administration, a key arm of our government that does many things that maybe you and I don't realize, uh, joining me today. My guest is Joe Rilanitis today. Bob. Great to be hey, here. It's as so always. nice to have you here with me today, and thank you for taking a little bit of time to come down and share with the Foxborough folks of a particularly interesting initiative by the Food and Drug Administration, and that is to promote education awareness about teen tobacco and tobacco use. Huge concern. And before the show, we were talking a little bit of history, and I am impressed by your in-depth knowledge of the American Civil War. Both the, the, the what war? <laughs> the war of northern aggression. Thank you very as much. As it's called. Um, and uh, <laughs> in, in if Jack Offler is listening out there, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's all cool. Actually, uh, Jack is uh, writing a very uh, uh, compelling read, a, a history of Foxworth's partici participation in the war. And so maybe that'll be a topic of a future program. But to go along with that line, there's a huge issue now with teen smoking and with the um, sale of tobacco to minors being verboten now, but you still see it. How on earth could a teen get a pack of cigarettes? Also, they cost so much, I cannot imagine anybody willingly spending $12 of their hard-earned money on a pack of smokes. You'd wonder, yeah. But going back to the Civil War reference, we were talking before the show about my upbringing in Virginia, and I distinctly remember when the rural route going by uh, my farm was uh, paved back in the 1970s, there was a huge orange sign erected by the highway department saying, your roads paved by the nation's cigarette tax dollars. So, you know, there's a huge lose-lose or win-win depending upon how you look at it because the federal government does make significant revenue, as does the state, off of cigarette tax dollars. So we're talking about teen smoking and teen smoking awareness but in the larger context, where does the government stand on all this? Well, the, the FDA stands on, on really health awareness. Uh, we, uh, we're looking at the people that smoke, and, we, and we, we're talking money here, which is really great. I'm, I'm a, a big numbers guy, as you know that. Uh, every year, this country loses in, in lost revenue and health care use uh, about $193 billion. Uh, it related to ta uh, tobacco uh, illness and, and so forth and so on. That's a huge chunk of money, a lot of money really. Uh, and, and so the FDA realized that we need to address young people's future addiction to tobacco and, and use of tobacco. And if you, you look at the, the 12 to 17 year old age group, Bob, um, there are about 10 million young Americans in that category. And you realize that this is where the tobacco industry gets its users as smokers for, for later on in life. And every, every day about 3,000, a little over 3,000 of those young people uh, try their first cigarette, their first tobacco product. And of that 3,000, about 700 or so will become habitual users of tobacco products. That's that Ten dollars a pack that you mentioned a moment ago. So that's revenue, I guess, for the for the tobacco companies. But isn't that a significantly better statistic than it was years ago? Because you know we used to the show now Mad Men on uh, one of the cable channels uh, still shows the the uh, purveyance of of, sure. of cigarette smoking. But you know listening to the radio shows that, that people do um, back in the day, they were sponsored by you know, they were. the Lux Radio Hour. The, yep. the Huge. Yeah, even as far as, as short as 10 years ago, uh, 12, 15 years ago with the Winston Cup uh, racing, uh, there was still the, the, the cigarette acceptance, I, I guess we should say, Nicely put. in society, yeah, it, it, which is no longer there, I'm feeling, because of all the other laws that have gone into effect, no smoking indoors, no sure. smoking in public places, uh, I understand now New York is passing a uh, law that's prohibiting, and we're not going to talk about places like 
Cambridge and all that, they have laws to do whatever. But separate countries. Separate countries, yeah, exactly, the People's <laughs> Republic. But uh, <laughs> we're not on on Cambridge Public Access, by the way, so it's all good. And they probably won't invite me back either. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the reality is, and, and not to make light of it, because it is a serious issue, secondhand smoke, and also just a general understanding, education, if you will, that cigarette smoking is bad for you. It, it is, and, and it, it's, it's indicated by the amount of money we spend on, on people who get sick. Um, you have 400 and, almost 450,000 deaths in this country, all age groups, not, not, thankfully not all young people, um, related to tobacco use. So that's a huge every chunk. Every year. Every year, yearly. That's almost half a million people dying. We've, we've got another 8.5 million Americans who are suffering chronic tobacco use related problems, emphysema, and, and all the other stuff that comes with that. And unless you've had somebody, a loved one or a relative who um, has gone through that with the emphysema, it, it's so debilitating. Oh, it is. It's uh, devastating. And it's one of those things where you just got to say, if you only knew 40 years ago what this was going to do to right. you now, would you have done that to yourself? Yeah. Yeah, you made a good point earlier in the show that, that tobacco use has become part of our, of our media and our film and, and our, our sports entertainment for years. And it, only recently has it really sort of turned around with the Family Smoking Prevention Tobacco Control Act, which the president signed into law in June of 2009. And, 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 he turned to the FDA, Health and Human Services, and said, you need to get back into, into, into educating young people. And, and that's the great thing about coming down here to Foxborough and, and getting on the program and talking about that. Um, we have taken a lot of time and money to look at young people's addiction to tobacco, Bob. And we realize that there's a certain socioeconomic group of young people that, that, you know, that due to peer group pressure, due to a desire to control their fate and control their life somewhat, turn to tobacco use as, as an alternative, a way to express independence. Hey, it's cool. It, it was cool, it really is cool. Hey, it makes me part of the in crowd. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking great, you're, you're smoking, you're, you're destroying your, your skin. I'm an uh, adult. You, you think, you, they're trying to be, and, and we're looking at these, poor, these young people and we're realizing that they need to be educated. So the FDA has really looked at social media, which is where a lot of young people uh, find their entertainment, find their connection on social media. Whether it's you know Facebook, YouTube, uh, you know the internet, uh, in the start of films. If you go to some of your, your movies now, there's an anti-smoking campaign uh, in the in the film industry that, that we're we're getting involved in, and we're trying to bring home this message that it's not cool, mm -hmm. it's not good for you at age 15 to start using tobacco products. It's going to definitely cause you to age prematurely. Uh, tobacco does that. It's not the most appealing look, most appealing smell, and it definitely impacts on your, your health later on. So if we're going to have a discussion about this, we also have to have a real discussion about you know, what we can do. And I don't have a demographic survey that I can put my finger on, but I suspect that my viewership are mostly adults uh, and grandparents, uh, parents and grandparents who have kids that might be facing this uh, peer pressure, this opportunity, uh, this, uh, we're having a late night in Blueberry Island and you know somebody's passing around the cigarettes, well of course I'm gonna have a cigarette because everybody else is having a cigarette and I don't wanna look like the odd duck out if I don't have a cigarette. So what message can I give my child to combat this great, because great unfortunately question. as we have this discussion here, it's all great, we're in a beautiful studio, It's daytime, people are watching, it's all good. But it's a whole different environment when me and 17 of my other friends are hanging around, sitting by the campfire, uh, playing a little guitar, having a little smoke. And for me to say, no, I, I can't do that. I can't stand up to my friends. I'll look, I'll look uncool. Yeah, that, that's, that's... I don't even know if uncool is a term these days, <laughs> but I will look not the cool person. It won't so. be one of the group. I won't um, be one of the group. Right. Well, yeah, that, that's where education comes into play and uh, need to stress individuality, decision making. And it's hard when you're 14 or 15. Strength and confidence. It, it and would be nice. It's hard when you're... When but you're, it's tough. It, it's, a, it's totally tough. When you're a young person and, and you want to be accepted and, and you've got this social economic pressure, you know, looking, looking in the face and, and you, you, you know, you, you want to use tobacco products. Um, 
Uh, we recommend that, that young folks, you know, visit the FDA website, you know, look at programs like this. And, and, and that, of course, is at www.fda.gov. <laughs> yeah, you can, now, you, I'm going to ask you, and this is a very good website, by the way, I'll repeat it again. Uh, and I'm here with uh, Joe Relinitis, who is our regional representative from the Food and Drug Administration. He's uh, blessed us with a little bit of time to uh, talk about teen smoking and the dangers of teen smoking and what we as adults can do to help prevent the issue from starting in the first place, go to their website at www.fda.gov. And it's a very robust website. I think you'll enjoy it if you click into it. Uh, there's a ton of information and this is a significant portion of what they have out there. Uh, it's a huge issue. Uh, it's been a huge issue and uh, Joe, what is it that we can do now? Well, you, you can you can monitor young people. You can, you can bring the words of wisdom to them as far as the physical and financial cost of tobacco use. I mean, it doesn't get any better than, than an adult, you know, talking with a younger person and trying to impact positively things and decisions they make in life. Because you know what? We all know people who have suffered, you know, cancer, or emphysema, or any, you know, any of the coronary problems associated with tobacco use. And you know, as in hindsight, they look back on what they did 25 or 30 years ago, and they wish they could have changed that. Adults can change that for young people now. They really can. And, and we do monitor um, the selling of tobacco products very closely to young people. It's prohibited if you're, if you're 18 or younger or you're un, oh, under the age of 18. You can't buy tobacco products. Uh, and so we find that a lot of the, the problems or violations on existing laws and regulations, Bob, just come down to, to retailers still selling to young people, not checking IDs, not being vigilant in, in, in doing the right thing when it comes to a federal and state law, when it comes to tobacco sales. So that's a real big thing, you know, guidance, words of wisdom, words of advice and encouragement uh, to get those 700 young people every day that become tobacco users away from getting addicted to tobacco products. That's why we have this campaign, which kicked off uh, late in the winter this year. And what is the name of the it's, campaign? It's the real cost of tobacco use. And the real cost is that you get sick earlier. You, you know, you're not as cool. You, it, it causes you premature aging. Um, it's an expensive habit to be involved in. And uh, it, you, need to, you need to understand that. And I think a lot of us uh, in the mainstream have seen uh, some of the uh, output of some of the message. Uh, there's a couple of commercials that are popularly airing now of the, uh, looks to be an older teen, because I'm sure nobody would go in under 18 to an establishment. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> uh, an older teen going into the store to buy the cigarettes and the clerk says, well, give me more. And so the one guy pulls out a tooth and, and the other girl pulls off a chunk of her cheek. And it's rather gross, but it is a telling message, or at least it's, and I know it's supposed to shock, but it's certainly right. got my attention. And if the mark of any, good advertising campaign is to get somebody to remember your product or the company. Well, I remember that. So yeah. uh, it's a very effective campaign. That's but it. it's good thing. Like going back 15 years ago, we also remember the posters that were distributed in the public schools and uh, of, you know, this is what your lung looks like healthy and this is what your lung looks like uh, after years of tobacco use. And uh, who of us can now forget, uh, <laughs> if we wanted to, the uh, old Marlboro man of uh, commercial lore uh, with the voice box talking. That's right, yeah. So there's so many messages that have been put out there and so many ad campaigns. And I have to say that at a certain level, it is effective. Because I think so. You're yeah. saying 700 out of 3,000 are going to become addicted, but that's a much better statistic than what it used to be, but it's not zero. No. So there's still a lot of work to be done. The, 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 well, well said. And, and we think we're, we're turning the corner in a lot of this. I mean, it, it, the country is dedicating its, its time to its young people, and, and well, we should. I mean, they're future leaders, future workers, and, and future everything for, for any nation. So you, you need to spend time looking at that 12 to 18, 12 to 17 year old age group and realizing that those 10 million young, young people coming on up, they need time 
and attention to do the right thing. They don't always do the right thing. They, they're still processing and developing the right choices in life. And, and as adults, as people in the media, people in the government, you know, family members, aunts and uncles, the whole shebang, you might say, the whole gambit of, of responsible adults, we owe them time and attention. And I, I'm real proud of the FDA and, and, and what we are doing in, in the real cost as far as teen use of, in tobacco products go. You know, we're, we're, we're on social media big time, you know, Facebook and, and YouTube and all the rest. We're right out there, you know, getting a peer-to-peer -peer message to these young people and offering them alternative, offering them common sense, you know, talked to them from people in their age group oftentimes and in message that they can really understand. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a long, hard campaign and I think in time, uh, I think it will be effective. So you say you're on social media and I'm pulling out my smartphone, not because I'm smart, but this is a prop. And if I were an adult, and I am, and I had children, and I do, and I wanted to pass this message along to them and get them linked into the social media, to this YouTube messaging, how would I go about doing that? How would I introduce them to it? What can I do as a parent to expose my kid to this message? Well, you, you, can, you, can, you can tell them to you know, visit you know, the, the social media sites. Not, they're already there, basically. I know they are. They are. They yes. are there. They are there. But Which you, is why I'm asking the question, because I'm not, and I don't know how to get to them. So what can I do as a parent to lead, to steer? Uh, be, talk, talk at their level. You know, talk where they exist. I mean, it doesn't take much to, to see every young person busy texting away, yes. you know, busy going to, to social media sites. You know, ask them to take some time um, if they're not going to listen to you as a dad, which I'm, I'm sure they do um, <laughs> sometimes. But you know, tell Katie them, and Kevin, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> tell, you know, tell, tell them to you know hit the tobacco product site, uh, you know, in social media. You know. Tell them to take a little bit of time to diversify, you know, text to their friends about that uh, and, and just get actively involved in bigger gambits than, than uh, you know, than the high school chit chat that they get involved in. But Joe, I don't have all the answers. How can I talk to my kid intelligently if I don't have all the answers? Well, that that's that requires research, you know, that requires attention to detail, that requires, you know, Kids that live in a digital environment, there's no doubt about that, Bob, we know that. Yes. Um, you know, hit, hit the FDA's website, backslash tobacco products. Um, take a I look. I love those backslashes. They get you, get you I, a lot of places. As I said, FDA.gov, the website, is a very robust site, and there's a ton of information out there. But if you put the backslash, it'll bring you right to the it information will. you're looking for. So it's backslash. Tobacco products, tobacco yeah, get products. you right there, or, or, or you know, or real cost program, or teens in tobacco. All the operative words that young people uh, feel real comfortable, you know, pressing the keys and and and, and doing the texting and, and going on uh, on the digital environment uh, and taking a look at the alternatives out there. Mm -hmm. if they don't believe you. They'll sure as heck believe their smartphone or their laptop. Well, you know, that's an interesting thing. Is that you know, sometimes it does require a resource or a source other than you as the adult because sure. we know as parents that we frequently get tuned out and it's not that we don't have a strong message and it's not that we don't know best because we always do knock on wood but the issue is that we're always there and we're giving unconditional love and they know that so the message comes differently from us or it's received differently when it's from us than it does from a peer, when it does from a site, a source, a, a social site. So this is a pretty good tool, you I would think. Well, we researched it pretty, I mean, we had a lot of time, and uh, you probably remember this, back in the 90s, the FDA was involved in, in the tobacco campaign back then into the Supreme Court, showed us the door and, and, and stopped us from doing that. So it, 10, 11 years later, we've returned with a, with a vengeance again, because it's a, it's a good idea, it's a good concept. It's a problem, it's an expensive problem mm -hmm. from a financial standpoint, Bob, as well as from a health awareness standpoint. And if we're to protect 10 million young people in this country, we've got to be real serious about it. We've got to get that message out. So uh, we, it's a crusade that you can really believe in, you know, teen protection when it comes to tobacco use and tobacco addiction. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that makes you sort of smile because you know 
in the government, in, you know, in, in the social environment. You're doing the right thing, mm. doing the right thing. Well, we're running out of time, but I always have a little curveball on my pocket. Here. Oh, no. So are you ready? Here it comes. Are you ready? All right. We don't script this as folks at Foxborough Central know, <laughs> and as you are quickly coming to realize. What about e-cigarettes? Aren't they safe? Isn't my child going to be totally protected by just having an e-cigarette? That's okay, and they can be cool, and it all looks fine, right? Sure. Well, we're extending. Right? Uh, well, right? it's an alternative. It is an alternative. Uh, we're extending um, regulatory activity, and we're looking at this real closely to uh, electronic cigarettes. The as science well. is still out on that. There's it, not there's not enough information yet because it's still a relatively new product. It is. It's it a curveball with a caveat. It's a curveball, but it's not a strike. It's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I like these sports analogies. <laughs> we are in the baseball season, it's and all we're, good. we're talking sports. Well, maybe here in this area, we're looking for the hockey season to come up shortly, or football. There you go. That's a, it's a, a, a it program for all seasons. That's right, that's right. All sports. Yeah, it, 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 there's uh, still data to be looked at in electronic cigarettes, and, uh, and as the agency extends its uh, regulatory guidance uh, into the area of tobacco use, that will be, be you know, widely described and uh, discussed, I'm sure. There are many challenges out there for our youth. There's smoking, sex, drugs alcohol, getting a job, learning to drive, becoming accepted, going That's to huge. school. Yeah. There's, uh, finding your way to adulthood is such a path. It's a, it's a path that we all look back with, uh, maybe not fondness, but we realize that it makes us the men and women that we are. But when you're living it, when you're doing it, it's the high drama and everything else that goes along with being a teen. It's so an odyssey. This is not an easy subject and it's not an easy topic to tackle, but it's one that we as adults really owe it to our youth, to our kids, to tackle and to educate ourselves. So you mentioned education, and that is the first step. We have to know what it is that we want to impart. And we also have to understand that just because we say it doesn't mean it's going to be so. It has to be something that and I love the fact that the FDA is embracing the new technologies and the new uh, social media outlets uh, to make that message uh, more readable, more receivable at that's the youth where, level. That's where the young people are, and we, and we know that. And we've taken time to research that. If we're going to reach these people, we need to hang out where they hang out, and we need to have legitimate messages that they'll find credible, and, uh, and just sort of run with it from there, Bob, really. That's a great message. I'm going to give you the last word, but as before we do, I'm going to wrap it up by saying visit the Food and Drug Administration's website at fda.gov to talk about teen smoking, to learn about teen smoking, the impacts that cause problems, and also what we as adults and parents can do to make our kids not make choices like this and perhaps give them a healthier, happier life. To get the specific information, you go to fda.gov backslash tobacco products. Tobacco products. Sure. Last word, sir. Um, a, a number, 443,000 deaths every year in the U.S. are related to tobacco use and tobacco products. That number alone ought to get someone's attention. Almost half a million Americans pass away because they use tobacco products. And you've got 10 million young people coming up between the age of 12 and 17. You don't want to be in that stat. Impressive number, sad number, but doing a lot of work and people like you, Joe Rolinitis, with the Food and Drug Administration, getting the message out. Hopefully that number will come down in future generations. Thanks. Joe, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out, spend with us here in Foxborough Central, and I want to thank you at home for taking the time to watch as we talk about teen smoking and issues that we can combat as adults. If you'd like to see this episode again, in addition to watching on your favorite cable access channel, you can always check us out at www.fcatv.org. Hit the button that says Foxborough Central and you can watch this or any of our other past episodes. I wanna thank my wonderful volunteers who come out here week after week to bring the messages to you. Betty Travers, Deb Storrs behind the camera, Gary Nash behind the glass, Michael Weber, our executive director, and Lauren Batar, who makes sure that we actually get on the air, if you can believe it. It doesn't just magically happen like that. I'm Bob Hickey, and if you want to reach out to me and maybe suggest an episode that features you or your organization, write to me by email at foxcentral at fcatv.org. Or you can always visit us at our beautiful studios here at 
28 Central Street in downtown Foxborough. Talk to Mark Nash at the table and find out how you can become a volunteer for cable access. Until next time, my friends, I am Bob Hickey. I am your host, and I thank you for taking a little bit of time. Have a great day, Foxborough.